What's going on friends? My name is Alexander Ayling and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my 12 essential New Zealand travel destination. It's hard to pick favorites, especially in a country as beautiful as Aotearoa, New Zealand, but I have spent two years living here. I've been traveling to New Zealand for my entire life. My dad was born and raised here. I studied abroad here. Right now, in this video, I'll be breaking down what I believe are the 12 essential travel destinations. So don't go anywhere. Friendly reminder, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Click that subscribe button now. Let's get that out of the way. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and drop a comment with your own suggestions down there in the comment section. Every little interaction with this video helps to share it further, which helps me to continue creating free content like this for your viewing pleasure. So let's get into the video. to pick favorites here in Aotearoa, New Zealand because the entire country is just so beautiful. It's one of the most unique and compact travel destinations in the world. One trip here is probably not enough to see it all. New Zealand is made up of three main islands, the North Island, the South Island, and Stewart Island located below the South Island. New Zealand is only about the size of the UK or the state of Oregon in the USA. So it's a fairly compact country. That being said, it's incredibly diverse. It has amazing different landscapes and it actually feels a lot bigger than it is. So you may be wondering what the name Aotearoa means. Well, it's Maori and the Maori were the first people to arrive here in New Zealand. Archaeologists believe that happened around the year 1200, maybe a little bit earlier, and they are Polynesians. They came on wakas or canoes, and they used celestial navigation following the stars and ocean currents to arrive here to the shores of New Zealand from other Pacific Islands, probably coming from Tahiti. Chances are your trip to New Zealand will begin on the North Island of New Zealand, known as Te Ika a Maui, or Maui's fish. Maui is a Polynesian demigod. You probably recognize from the movie Moana, the character played by The Rock. Part man, part god, he was traveling in his waka, in his canoe, and he caught a giant fish, which he pulled up and landed. That fish is the North Island of New Zealand, and his canoe, Te Waka a Maui, is the South Island. If you look at a picture on a map, you can actually kind of see the resemblance. The North Island does kind of look like a large fish, like a stingray or something, and the South Island does kind of look like a canoe. Chances are your trip is gonna begin in Auckland, the largest city in the country. It's located towards the top of the North Island of New Zealand, and it is where one quarter of the entire population of New Zealand live. There's about five million people in New Zealand. Now, I don't wanna offend a quarter of the country by saying this, but chances are you're probably not traveling all the way to New Zealand to visit Auckland. Now, nothing against Auckland, but I would suggest keeping your time in Auckland to a bare minimum. This is probably where you're gonna pick up your rental car or a rental van. Personally, I think the best way to see New Zealand is via road trip in a camper van. Hear me out, this is why. This will be our home for the next Two weeks. First off, public transportation in New Zealand is really not all that great. There is public transportation through buses, but they only take you from city to city and most of the great attractions are outside of the cities. I would suggest you get a camper van because you can sleep in it, which is gonna save you money on accommodation. And it's also the freedom of four wheels. You can travel the whole country, you can pull over at a scenic beach somewhere or by a river or a lake and you can freedom camp. Most of the country is open to freedom camping. But definitely check out rules and regulations for the area that you're considering and always be respectful. Clean up after yourself. Do not trash New Zealand. So back to Auckland. When I brought my wife here for the first time in 2019, we did a two week long trip via camper van, flew into Auckland. We spent the night with family friend, my god sister who lives there. And then we picked up our van and we hit the road. Now, if you are planning on spending a couple of days in Auckland, there are some nice beaches in the area there. 
uh, especially Piha. The whole city is built around a big harbor. There are a couple of fun little experiences that you can do, like you can hop onto an America's Cup sailing boat there and feel what it's like to be part of the crew of one of these race yachts, these racing yachts. You can also go up to the Sky Tower, which is the tallest building in the city, and you can jump off of that safely. I should say, it's not like you can just jump off of the building. You are strapped in, it's a controlled descent. But yes, New Zealand is big on adrenaline sports as you will find out further in this video. So if that's something that you're into, check out the Sky Tower. And then also there are some nice museums in Auckland as well. The Auckland War Memorial Museum is there, which usually has some really interesting exhibits. But in all honesty, in my opinion, the best of New Zealand lies outside of Auckland. So I'd suggest keeping your time in Auckland to a minimum. Number two, Topa, the Tongariro Crossing in the Waikato region. Just a three hour drive south of Auckland lies the majestic Lake Topa, which sits at the base of the Tongariro National Park and the three main volcanoes that dominate the skyline here. This region should definitely be on your list. Whether you're a thrill seeker or a chill seeker, Topa has everything you're looking for. Mountain biking, fly fishing, bungee jumping, hot springs, trekking, you name it, the Lake Topa region has it on offer. Most of the accommodation options are on the north shore of the lake, while the best fishing and access to the Tongariro National Park is from the south end of the lake near the town of Turangi. So if you're looking to chill, make sure you take some time to soak in the Wairaki Thermal Terraces. This is a thermal spa with healing waters rich in silica and sulfur that bubble up straight out of the earth right into a bunch of different spa pools and it is just the best way to kick off your trip feeling relaxed and getting ready for a fun adventure. If you want to get some adrenaline, check out Hookah Falls. The Hookah Falls are where New Zealand's longest river, the Waikato, empties onto Lake Topa, narrows down significantly before dropping 220,000 liters of water per second over an 11 meter waterfall. If you want to get right up close to that powerful waterfall, you can hop in a jet boat. Jet boating was invented here in New Zealand and essentially these are very fast power boats powered by a jet engine to navigate rivers at high speeds quite close to rocks and boulders so if you're looking for adrenaline check out that hookah falls jet there's a bungee jump over the waikato river there as well lake topa and the rivers located on the southern shore of the lake have some of the best fly fishing in the world both for rainbow and brown trout. It's a great place to get out and go fishing, whether you hire a boat and go trolling or you go wading and fly fishing. There's really options for everybody here. It's a great place to learn to fish if you've never done that before. And there's plenty of guides and outfitters who can help you with that. And if you're up for a big adventure and you want to get outdoors and get active, I'd highly suggest you look into doing the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. It's one of New Zealand's great walks, which I'll talk about more later in this video. And it's a one day, big day, up and over a dormant volcano. Now I've shot a whole guide video for the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. So if you want to learn more about that, you can click on it here or just go down into the description of this video where I've linked all of the additional videos um, for the things that I'm talking about in this video. So check that out if you're interested in learning more. Number three, Rotorua. Located just two and a half hours south of Auckland, the city of Rotorua is one of the biggest tourist draws in the country. Known for its 18 lakes, three rivers, and countless hot springs, it's definitely worth adding to your travel bucket list. Swimming, fishing, lakeside picnicking, paddle boarding, water skiing, all of these type of water sports are available. Additionally, the forests surrounding the lake are home to some of the best mountain biking, both single track and park mountain biking in the world, including the newly opened Fakarewa Rewa Forest Loop, Fakarewa Rewa, a 33 kilometer one-way trail 
that takes you through towering redwood forests and native bush. Rotorua is also a great place to get a deeper knowledge and understanding of the local Maori culture. The Maori are the First Nations people of New Zealand and they have a fascinating culture, widely celebrated and embraced here in New Zealand, or as it's known in Te Reo Maori, the Maori language, Aotearoa which means the land of the long white cloud. You can journey back in time and experience the proud history of the Maori people at any of the Maori cultural experiences on offer in Rotorua. I visited the Tamaki Maori village a few years back and really enjoyed it. You'll get to explore a recreated village as well as learn about mythology, religion, and culture through stories, songs, and dances. And at the end of it, you'll get to feast on local food known as kai. But for me personally, my favorite part about Rotorua are the hot springs. This is one of the most geothermally active areas of New Zealand, so don't sleep on this. This is a great opportunity to soak your bones in healing waters. I would suggest checking out the Polynesian Spa. It's right in the middle of town and it has exclusive access to some of the highest mineral content hot springs in the country. And those healing waters are rich in silica and sulfur which will leave your bones feeling younger and your skin feeling silky smooth. Number four, Wellington. No visit to New Zealand would be complete without visiting the capital city Wellington. It was dubbed the coolest little capital by Lonely Planet. It's creative, it's artsy, it's vibrant, and there's always something going on. Built around a harbor and it's got a reputation for being pretty hip. It's a perfectly sized city with vibrant restaurants, a bustling art scene, and so much to explore. I've got a full video in which I spend the perfect day in Wellington, so you can watch that by clicking on the link here or checking it out down in the description of this video. But quickly, I'd suggest you take a stroll along Oriental Bay, you cruise the shops and boutiques on Cuba Street, and you check out the incredible exhibits at the Tapapa Museum. There's a lot more to see and do here, so if you wanna learn more, check out my other video. Number five, Raglan. Now let's jump back up to the northwest coast of the country. About two hours south of Auckland is the small, cute surf town of Raglan. Raglan rose to international fame for being home to one of the longest left point breaks in the world, a world-class wave called Manu Bay. Regardless of whether or not you're a surfer, this is definitely a place to come and check out for at least a day or two. If you're new to surfing and want to learn, there are plenty of surf shops here that can teach you how to surf, especially at the local black sand beach, Narunui. But I would not recommend surfing at Manu Bay unless you are an experienced surfer. There's a lot of people in the water, it's a heavy wave, and there is a local crowd. So you want to always be respectful when you're surfing there, follow surf etiquette, don't drop in on people, and stay out of the way of people who are already on the wave. But if you do surf there, it is a really fun wave and it could be one of the longest rides of your life. Back in town, there are plenty of nice little cafes and restaurants, all of them very artsy and having their own vibe. And then just outside of town, you can marvel at the natural wonder, which is Bridal Vale Falls. It's one of the most accessible big waterfalls in the country, so make sure you stop off there as well. Okay, number six, the Coromandel and the Bay of Plenty. So I'm kind of combining these two different regions together because they're next to each other and if you're driving, it's very easy to visit both of them. Hopping over from the west coast at Raglan, we'll go to the east coast and check out the Coromandel Peninsula. This corner of New Zealand has this lovely subtropical climate, especially if you're visiting in the winter time in the United States or the summer here in New Zealand, anywhere from November until April. There are tons of beaches and cute beach towns home to batches, as Kiwis call them, or small little cabins, beach cabins, where people come from the city and spend the summers or weekends right near the beach. There are tons of different coves and beaches to explore in this region, especially the world famous Cathedral Cove. You probably recognize this place from movies like the Chronicles of Narnia, but if you're a photographer, this is 
definitely worth adding to your New Zealand bucket list because it is a stunningly beautiful place, especially if you're trying to take some great photos. Even if you're not a photographer, it's just a great place to visit and spend the day chilling at the beach. If you're in the area, make sure you check out the nearby hot water beach where for a couple of hours either side of low tide, you can dig your own hot tub right into the sand. So all you need is a shovel and you can dig your own personal hot tub right on the beach and it's just a very unique experience. If you're gonna visit, just make sure that you time it up with the tides because it's not available at high tide. It's also a good idea to bring a shovel. If you arrive to the beach and you don't have a shovel, you can always just ask a local to borrow theirs. Continuing down the coast from the Coromandel Peninsula, we come into the Bay of Plenty region. This area also has great weather, plus tons of beaches and cute towns to check out. A couple of beach towns worth checking out, Waihee Beach, Mount Mwanganui, and Ahope Beach. Most of these places have caravan parks. Caravan parks are essentially campgrounds where you can drive up with your van and you can park up. You have access to showers and cooking areas as well as electricity so you can charge your own devices, etc. And oftentimes the caravan parks are just located in prime real estate. There's pretty much caravan parks all over the country. While you're down in that area and you want to experience a little bit more of the Lord of the Rings, you can head to the town of Matamata, Mata, which is just inland from there, back in the Waikato region, and you can head to Hobbiton. Hobbiton is the set from the Lord of the Rings for the Shire. So everything that happened in the Shire, the beginning of the first Lord of the Rings movie with Bilbo's birthday and you know the home where Bilbo and Frodo lived, you can go check all of that out. It's still there, it's immaculately preserved. You can even go to the pub, the Green Dragon, and have a pint. It's a great experience and it's definitely worth checking out for yourself. Number seven, Hawks Bay. If you want good food and great wine, Hawks Bay is the place to go. Located on the east coast of the North Island, the Hawks Bay region is famous for its temperate climate, which is perfect for growing grapes as well as stone fruit. Hawks Bay has become home to some world-class wineries and you can go wine tasting at all of them as well as dine at some world-class restaurants. There's three main towns that I'd recommend visiting in the Hawks Bay region and you can do so quite easily. Number one is Napier. It's famous for its art deco architecture. It has an art deco festival every year where people dress up all old-timey, go out on the town, drink cocktails, drink wine, eat good food, and just have a good time. So if you're visiting during that festival, it's definitely worth checking out. Then in the city of Hastings, there is an area called Havelock North. It's right next to Tamata Peak, which has some great hiking, mountain biking, trekking, and also right down the coast from there, you have Cape Kidnappers, which is home to a world-class golf course as well as an accessible gannet colony. You can go out there on this four-wheel drive tractor which takes you down this huge stretch of beach and you end up getting up close and personal with gannets which are very long range flying seabirds. They're kind of like albatrosses, very cool. There's a lot more to see and do here and if you want in-depth tips, then you can check out the video that I shot in Hawks Bay. It's linked in the description. Number eight, Golden Bay to Kaikoura. So we're now gonna cross from the North Island Teika Amaui to the South Island, Te Waka Amaui, and you're probably gonna have to take the ferry. So there's a ferry which runs from Wellington on the North Island to Picton on the South Island. There's two different companies. Blue Bridge Ferry is probably the more affordable option, but it's worth checking out for yourself. So if you're gonna be taking your rental car or your van from the North Island to the South Island, you'll have to take the ferry. I have a video documenting that experience as well. It's linked in the description. So once you cross from the North Island to the South Island, you'll arrive in the small town of Picton. This is located in a region called the Marlborough Sounds. 
essentially areas where the ocean comes deep into the land in large inlets. It's pretty sparsely populated there. It's, the roads are very windy. It takes a little while to get out from Picton and over to the main town in the area, which is called Nelson. Nelson is worth checking out for a couple of days in its own right. There's a lovely little town near there called Kaiteri Terry, which is a great place to camp and chill. But I'd suggest if you're there, driving all the way to the end of the road at Collinwood out to Golden Bay. From there, you'll be able to check out the Farewell Spit, which is a large sand spit, which extends out into the Cook Strait. And make sure you check out Farariki Beach. It's been voted one of the prettiest beaches in the country. It's definitely worth checking out while you're out there. This is a wild and unspoilt corner of Aotearoa. And it's a place where you can really get a feel of what this country was like in the past. I don't know, there's something magical there. This is a great place to fish for kingfish, or to forage for clams, or to hike along the surreal and beautiful coastline. Once you've explored the area, hop back in your car and drive over to the east coast town of Kaikoura. The town of Kaikoura was founded by whalers and it's located on a peninsula on the east coast, the northeast coast of the South Island. Now it's this funky little fishing village that is one of the best places in the world for whale watching or dolphin encounters. There's so much ocean life in this area. It's pretty insane. You could be sitting on the beach watching dolphins jump out, thousands of them. Also, it has great surf and even more delicious seafood. It's a place of majestic scenery, the Kaikoura Ranges. There's few places in the world where you can see snow-capped peaks right next to the sea. It's a magical spot and it's worth visiting for sure. Okay, number nine, the Wild West Coast. From Kaikoura, you're gonna drive over the Southern Alps, the large mountain range, which essentially divides the South Island right down the middle. It's this big jagged spinal cord of mountains that runs from the top of the South Island all the way to the bottom. I'd suggest you drive over the scenic Lewis Pass. There's only a couple of passes which allow you to cross from the east to the west coast. But from Kaikoura, you can easily access the Lewis Pass and you can drive up and over, which is an experience in itself. Once you've crossed the Lewis Pass, you can stop for a quick thermal soak at Maruya Hot Springs. They've got camper van or caravan parking where you can stay there for pretty affordable or they have their own little hotel rooms and a spa, but it's a great place for a thermal soak. Maybe you're starting to notice now that one of my favorite things to do here in New Zealand is to soak in hot springs. Well, there's a lot of them, and each one's different, but they all make you feel damn good. The west coast of New Zealand's South Island is one of the wettest and wildest regions in the entire country. It's remote and rugged, but it's stunningly beautiful. It's a place that will humble you, but leave you awestruck. The best way to see this region is to road trip and freedom camp, but it is worth being prepared as towns and stores are fairly sporadic. Some highlights on the West Coast are the town of Franz Josef, where you can see the Franz Josef Glacier. It's accessible via a short hike, four kilometer return hike, where you can walk right up to the base of the glacier. It's an impressive experience and one that will really blow your mind, especially if you've never seen a glacier before. Another cool spot to visit is Hokitika. This is a funky little hippie town and it hosts an annual wild foods festival where you can challenge your preconceptions and your taste buds and eat a large variety of wild foods and foods that you probably wouldn't find at your local grocery store. This is a big region and if you are gonna add it to your list, it's worth allocating a large chunk of time, at least four or five days to travel through this region. Okay, number 10, the Mackenzie country. It's time to dive into the heart of the South Island. And in my opinion, the most beautiful part of it is known as the Mackenzie country. It feels like the big sky country of Montana or Wyoming. Wide open spaces, mountains on the horizon, big skies, big stars, 
and it's gotta be on your New Zealand travel bucket list. Honestly, my brain struggled to process the amount of beauty that was behind every different turn in the road. No trip to this region is complete without visiting the Auraki or Mount Cook National Park. This is a rugged land of rock and ice. It's home to 19 3,000 meter plus peaks, including the tallest mountain in the country, Mount Cook, or Auraki as it's known in the Maori language, which means the cloud piercer. It's the mountain that Sir Edmund Hillary trained on before his historic 1953 summiting of Mount Everest with his climbing partner, Tenzing Norgay. So that kind of puts into perspective how serious this mountain is. Another must visit in this area is the beautiful turquoise Lake Tekapo. This is a dark sky preserve so the stargazing at night in this region is unparalleled. So if you're into astrophotography, then this is a place to visit. You can also try your hand at fishing for salmon and monster trout in the nearby hydroelectric canals. I've got a vlog documenting my experience in this area, which is also linked in this video's description. Okay, number 11, Queenstown and Central Otago. Now I've saved Queenstown to the end of this video because it's one of the most popular tourism destinations in the country. If you're considering visiting New Zealand, you've probably already heard about Queenstown. There is so much to see and do in Queenstown that I could make an entire video just about this city. In fact, if you want me to do that, let me know down in the comments section and I will make that happen. But we'll keep it short and sweet for the premises of this video. Queenstown is located on the shores of Lake Wakatipu, the third largest lake in the country. It's rumored that gold prospectors named this city. Since the gold rush slowed, Queenstown has rebranded itself as the adventure capital of the world. It's got so much on offer, it's honestly hard to choose what to do. But at the end of the day, that all comes down to you. Winter or summer, there's always something on offer. Now, I lived in Queenstown for three months, working odd jobs and snowboarding during the winter of 2009. Another great experience on offer is skydiving, but personally, I think the best adrenaline activity in Queenstown is bungee jumping. A New Zealander named AJ Hackett was the first person to open a commercial bungee jump in the world. He did it in the late 80s, right outside of Queenstown at the Kawarau Bridge. I did this bungee jump when I was 16 years old. It was the first time I had ever gone bungee jumping and it was a really great experience. But if you wanna level up, I suggest you try the Nevis bungee. The Nevis bungee is the biggest bungee jump in New Zealand, and it's one of the biggest bungee jumps in the Southern Hemisphere. It's huge. You're dangling from a platform on a wire over a giant valley with a river below you, and you have to waddle your way up to the edge before chucking yourself into the abyss. Two, one, bungee. Yeah! It is one of those experiences that will viscerally remind you of what it feels like to be truly living. So if you've never gone bungee jumping before, I suggest you do it in Queenstown. If you wanna get things started, do the littler one at the bridge, but if you really want to level up, do the Nevis bungee jump. Another great attraction is the Shotover Jet. The Shotover River comes out of the mountains and it goes through the Shotover River Gorge where it tightens into this little maze. Now, getting your heart rate up and all of this adrenaline, inevitably you're gonna have to bring it back down again. The best place to do that is at the hot pools, the onsen hot pools. You can hire a private tub with a glass of wine or champagne, and you can take in a beautiful sunset over the incredible mountain scenery. It's definitely worth adding to your Queenstown bucket list. Number 12, do a great walk, preferably the Milford Track. No trip to New Zealand is complete without at least going on a hike. The country is crisscrossed with hiking trails, with backcountry huts, with tramping and camping. And if you don't get out and do some hiking while you're in New Zealand, it's a travesty. Some might say it's a crime, but I know you're probably pressed for time on your trip, but I would highly suggest you try to book at least one of the great walks. Now, if you only wanna dedicate a day to that, you can do the Tongariro Alpine Crossing up in the Lake Topa area. I've shot an entire guide to doing that hike. 
Uh, it's linked in the video description. But I really believe that it's worth coming down here and trying to do a multi-day, overnight Great Walk. And of all of them, it's worth trying to do the king of the Great Walks, the Milford Track. Located in the region of Fiordland, the Milford Track is known as the world's greatest walk. This is a life bucket list adventure, folks. Over three nights and four days, you travel up one remote river valley over an imposing and awe-inspiring mountain range, past one of the tallest waterfalls in the world, and out to the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Milford Sound. Booking the Milford Track is quite competitive. You'll need to try to do this at least a year in advance. So go to the Department of Conservation website, DOC as it's known here, and look into making your booking as soon as possible. If you can't get a spot on the Milford Track, it's still worth going down to the Milford Sound and doing some day hikes there, getting out on the water on the Milford Sound itself. There are a few places in the world with scenery like this. If you wanna experience the scenery, but you're not up for a big hike and you don't wanna deal with the crowds at Milford Sound, then consider Doubtful Sound. I shot a whole video about it, which once again is linked in the description of this video. And it was one of the best experiences we've had so far in New Zealand. So check that out as an alternative. So now I'm asking you, of all of these travel experiences that I've listed here, of all these destinations, what sticks out the most to you? What are you definitely adding to your New Zealand travel bucket list? Let me know down there in the comments section. I really love your feedback. I love having this two-way conversation and I love hearing from you. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down there. And if you're not subscribed yet, please let's change that. Subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos because I have a lot more of these travel guides coming out very, very soon. Not just from New Zealand, but from all across the world, from all of my travels. Okay, friends, with that, we'll say goodbye. Have a great day, thanks for watching. Peace, see you in the next one.